since birth. Yes, I know my worth. Go hard, put in the work. Cause I ain't come first. And I ain't even need your help. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another tournament breakdown presented by Midway USA. You could also call this a tournament recap, but sometimes people get those confused with our full on BMP fishing the series. These are just an addition, a little bit more in depth breakdown of what I was looking for, how I caught them, what I used to catch them this week, not as much of the entertainment and all of the uh, goofiness that comes with the series. So if you want a good laugh, make sure you check that out when it comes out. Let's get into the baits this week. Uh, really, it was kind of simple. I tried a lot of stuff, but what it came down to is that I needed these fish to react to something. I, I couldn't really fish slow this week, or at least the ones that I was messing with. And so that really came down to two things for me cranking with some speed and throwing a big flutter spoon to get those fish to react and one of the deals was is i was catching them all the way from 10 foot to 25 foot so one of the crankbaits i was throwing a 10 xd in a bar fish yellow bass pattern that imitates a lot of those sand bass and stuff that are in this lake right and they get in those same places and school up in those same places as the largemouth and the things that I was looking for were little out turns and places in the timber or just any of those clear patches that had a good hard bottom, right? That was a key, key thing. I'd use my Humminbird Solix units, idle around during practice, and you would see it would just be real dark and dark, and that's your soft bottom. And then when it would brighten up, and I run color palette number one, it's the blue palette, when you'd see that real kind of brighter white, that's your hard bottom. And then you would look for those little individual black dots and those bigger dots, those were the bigger largemouth that were feeding on those places. And so I just kind of adapted to whatever depth those places were in, right? I said I was finding them from 10 foot all the way down to 25. And even by the last afternoon, some of those fish were getting out to 27, 28 foot. And so I would just use whatever bait I felt I needed to to target those bass, right? You want to make sure that that bait is digging into the bottom all of the time. Um, the next key bait, and this was probably the biggest key one for me this week where I caught, I would say probably the most fish I weighed in, uh, was on this Rapala DT-16 in Big Shad. Uh, I don't know why this color seems to work here so well, but it's just a color that I've always done really well on Lake Fork with ever since they came out with it. And to get into the setup that I use for that, uh, it's the same setup I throw my 10XD on. It is an Alpha Angler Meg Rebound, which is a 7.6 medium heavy, moderate fast. So it is a glass rod, it's 100% S-glass where you have that good parabolic bend that we talk about so that when you hook those bass, you give yourself the best chance at landing them. Um, you know, you're gonna lose some of these big ones when you're cranking as fast as I was. And to help out with that, I'm throwing the Daiwa Stize 6.3 to one. So a little faster than what most people crank with. You hear a lot of deep cranking throwing those slower five to one gear ratios. That's to help so you don't wear yourself out. Um, you got more power with those lower gear ratios, but you get a lot more speed out of the 6.3 to one. When I'm talking about getting those fish to react, that speed helps, right? I can burn that bait, get it burning super fast, get those fish to follow, stop it, and it almost forces them to react because they almost run into that bait when they're chasing it and throwing it on 12 pound Seaguar Tatsu. Uh, that has been a huge key for me. Most of the time, if I'm in open water, I'll crank with 10 Tatsu. But here, these giant fish, so much standing timber in the water, that 12 pound just gives you a little more abrasion resistance. Uh, and I was able to still get 
uh, DT down just fine in 16, even sometimes touch 17 foot if I was able to get a good long cast. So exact same setup for those two. And then right here is the flutter spoon. Now I wish I could give you the name of this flutter spoon, but I honestly don't know the brand of this flutter spoon. I buy it at a gas station tackle shop uh, in South Carolina. Uh, and that's about all I know about it, but it is, it's probably my favorite flutter spoon. Uh, just seems to work really well. Throwing it on a Daiwa Tatula 7.3 to one, Daiwa Tatula 150. Uh, I like that bigger spool size. It seems to help with the casting distance and being able to pick up that line with the big flutter spoon. And then throwing it on an Alpha Angler, don't even know what to call this rod. Uh, this is actually a wide glide prototype that we were building for the swim baits and it was a little bit slighter, lighter version than a wide glide. And it has just become my spoon rod. If there is a demand for this rod, make sure you guys let the folks at Alpha Angler know. We've talked about potentially making this rod, but we're not 100% sure. Um, when I'm not throwing this one on the spoons, most of the time I end up using the hitter. It's our 7.6 heavy. This one's a 7.9 heavy, so just a little bit bigger. And throwing it on 20 pound Tatsu. I like that extra stretch, right? When you're snapping this bait, if one of those bass eats it when you snap it, that little extra stretch is gonna help uh, and you get great abrasion resistance with it. So super fun bite this week catching them. Uh, I mean, really kept it pretty simple with the amount of rods. I tried a lot of different things. Caught bass on drop shots, right? Caught, caught them on a deception worm. Uh, I caught one big one on a hair jig. It was literally the one hair jig bite I got all week. <laughs> but that was the, the fish that got me to 30 pounds on day number two. Uh, but I mean, super cool week. Again, hats off to Lee Livesey. We were able to catch a dirty 30 this week. We are able to catch 102 pounds, two ounces, and still finish second and got beat, which is pretty dang impressive. Uh, one of my favorite lakes to fish in the country. But that's it, me and Kyle. Well, we're gonna go do some bassing right now. We've got a few scores to settle with these bass, so make sure you guys stay tuned, watch the full, the full BMP Fishing the series, and uh, we'll be coming at you guys here again soon from Lake Pickwick.